Hey there. Automation is by far my most played game on Steam, with BMG Drive not trailing too far behind. And it kinda pisses me off that these two games, two games that I've collectively spent thousands of hours playing, two games I and many others hold near and dear to their hearts, have the majority of their content uploaded to YouTube looking like this. Are you ready for the test? Bring it on! Then turn I'm losing control. control! Oh no! Seems to if you clicked on this video, hopefully you have the same mindset that I do surrounding these games. Automation is more than just a vector to create BMG Drive cars with, and BMG Drive is more than just a bright colored content farm, and I promise you we're not all fucking like that. Without sounding like too much of a pretentious asshole, here's a bell curve. You as in you, the target audience of this video, fall somewhere around... Mm, here. I like to make myself believe that I fall somewhere around here in the above average area. Sometimes I can crank out some pretty good looking shit, but I'm wildly inconsistent and I often doubt my own skills and I end up deleting old cars I no longer like looking at and... You know what, let's... instead of it being a point, let's have it be a general area. Now. A big section of this video will end up being analyzing a car I've already created that I believe looks good, and comparing it to another vehicle I've already created that I think looks bad. Comparing those differences, and then using that comparison in order to create a third car that looks good. But I feel like only analyzing my own vehicles would be doing a great disservice to the people who occupy this section of the bell curve. The really good people. All of the cars that you just saw, including the Family Guy house, were posted to the official Automation Discord server, which you can access by clicking this button on the main menu of Automation, or by typing Automation Game into the Invite Link box on Discord. You may be wondering to yourself, okay, those cars are cool and all, but why did you show me them? And my answer to that is my rule number zero about making good cars, and that is looking at other cars. That includes both real cars and automation cars, like the ones I've just shown you. I'm not saying copy cars, and you definitely shouldn't copy automation cars because that's really not cool to the people who created them, but looking at what others have done can give you a really good perspective on how to make your own cars without actually having to do any work towards bettering yourself on proportions or body morphs or level of detail or engine tuning or world building or whatever else. Speaking of doing actual work towards bettering yourself though, you may have noticed this car throughout the video a few times. This is the 2002 Mizak Kuruma. It's a Japanese full-size sedan named after the first car you use in Grand Theft Auto 3, and it's what I believe to be one of my best works. This, on the other hand, is the 2012 Idaho Eobing. It's the size of a Miata, it is a huge racing V12, and somehow it gets better gas mileage than the Kuruma. I think it decently represents what not to do when it comes to designing cars. So here we are in automation, we're going to be looking at the Kuruma first, uh, we're going to look at the engine first. So I don't have a very good grasp of how the engine system in this game works. I usually stick to looking at the engines of whatever cars I'm basing the car I'm making off of, so I usually just stick close to that. I can usually navigate myself through these buttons, but when it comes to actual of these, these sliders, I have a harder time understanding. So what I do is I click this AI Tune button. This is a newer feature of the game, and you can tune the engine for either power or economy. This one was tuned for economy, usually a sports car you would tune for power. Now, 
I would say don't get too used to using the AI tune, and every time you do use it, kind of look at what engine the game is made for you to try and understand here's what works, here's what doesn't work, and also make sure to actually fine-tune the engine after the game does it for you, just so you can make it just a slight bit better for what the car is supposed to be. Eventually try and get yourself to be able to actually do it all yourself. I'm not there yet, I hope to be there at some point, but again, not a big engine guy when it comes to making them in this game. Now, what I want to draw your attention to first is how, I don't want to say bumpy or curvy, but basically how bumpy and curvy the car is. A lot of novices do is they don't add a lot of depth, right? Their, their cars are very flat, and that's something that doesn't look good. You can see this car, when you zoom in, you can see it has a lot of flaws to it. These reflections, these gaps, this, these are horror like not not good right but even then you can see how it's kind of up like this and when you turn off fixtures you can see how it's a lot flatter you can tell it's a lot flatter without it and it looks way, way better with it right it's a small detail but it's pretty important same thing is done to the hood right this hood you have this this hood bulge here this hood bulge here this one kind of comes out more and it goes over the hood seam, which has a custom hood seam. I'll get to that in a second. But, again, flat hoods is a very bad thing that people fall into as well. Um, it, it doesn't ruin the car, per se, but it adds a little bit more depth and, and character and texture to it. So I also said about these custom hood seams. Now, this is these are made out of bumper bars. So these same fixtures I use to make this bumper are the same fixtures I use to make these black hood seams, or just seams in general. And I also used it to outline this light. And you can see this light fixture is not a light fixture. This isn't a mod, this isn't part of the base game, this is custom made using fixtures in game. So what you do is you use these bumper bars and use these patchworks, very, very useful fixtures, patchworks, and you are able to cut out part of the body and replace it with, in this case, this steel uh, filling and this glass here. You have to angle the camera weirdly to click on it. You have this glass here. You have this back uh, kind of the, I guess, housing or whatever of the, the light. And using these all together, you're able to make custom shapes. Make whatever shape you want. Now. If you're like me and you don't have a sense of proportion very well, um, you may have trouble actually trying to figure out how how in the hell you're going to actually make this look good. And the way you do that is actually by using existing fixtures. Now, what I did in order to make these lights is I used these MDHL housings, which these are how people used to make custom lights in the, uh, the olden days before patchwork's really a thing. But now, what I use them for is I'll place one, I placed one like that, or I guess originally, I placed one like this, and I wanted some out outage, I guess, right here, so I got another one, and I stretched it out kind of like this, and then I built the, the actual bumper bars, the black bumper bar outlines around it, and after that, I kind of tweaked it a bit to fit the, the body better and fit the hood seam better and kind of wrap around and whatnot. And I kind of shrunk this and stuff, and I was able to reach the end result. So we're at the side of the car, and you can see these are two very small details, the mirrors and the wipers, but they're details that a lot of people miss. And I've done it many times in the past. I'll make a car, it'll look good, I'll take a good picture of it, I'll post it everywhere that I post my pictures to, which is usually the Automation Discord server, and a few other Discord servers I'm part of. And then I'll realize that I forgot wipers. So just always have that in the back of your head. You know, wipers are part of this MISC features menu, meaning that they're kind of out of the way. Mirrors do have their own, so they're easier to be able to remember if you're just looking down the list of categories for 
what you're going to be using, but again, just always remember them. A lot of cars, again, it doesn't completely ruin a car, but it just adds a bit more realism to it. And we're also going to move down here to these side skirts. Now these side skirts are also made out of custom bumper bars, and I want to bring attention to this lip right here. You can see even as, even though the bumper bar itself adds a lot of depth to it. You have this ridge here and here, and you have this here following the seam. If it was just this one flat thing, it'd look pretty tacked on and it'd look pretty weird and, and whatnot. It'd still look flat. So that's why these bumper bars are used. Now there's two different types of bumper bars that I use for making pretty much everything on the car. And that's you have these rounded edge ones and you have these flat edge ones. The rounded edge ones are good for lips like this at the bottom in order to separate the car from basically not car anymore. And these are pretty much good for everything else because you don't really want to use these for a lot because it has this round f edge on it and it isn't able to be connected to each other as well. You can't really stack them on top of each other without them having this weird effect. We're also going to be looking at the interior. Now the interior I'm also not an interior guy. Some people on the automation discord server and on Twitter and on the Reddit and wherever you find automation cars at make some really, really, really good looking interiors. And I kind of missed that train. I remember back when they first added 3D fixtures and interiors and stuff, people were kind of like experimenting with them a lot and I really wasn't. So I'm sure if I gave myself a lot of time to really look at car interiors and really utilize the 3D fixtures and stuff, I could probably get to a point where I'm good at using interiors. But for now, usually I just like tacking on a few things in order to be able to keep the windows transparent without it looking stupid like there's nothing in the car. So usually that just boils down to seating, uh, a transmission, a dashboard, and a steering wheel. But you can still see, I mean, you can see like the chassis and stuff through the floor and all the suspension bits and stuff. So it's not perfect. I would definitely say, again, if you want to really get into making 3D interiors, look at how real cars look, try and mimic, not mimic, but try and emulate that, throw your own spin on it. The back, we're going to, we're trying to talk about the wheels first, because I haven't talked about the wheels yet. Now these are hubcaps, because this is supposed to be the base model car. The hubcaps are actually painted that steel wheel color that you see on the steel wheels, while the rest of them are the like silver color, whatever, the steel, the unpainted color that I guess wheels come in. Um, this is five lug nuts. Five lug nuts is what a normal car would use. Four is what something that was it would be really small, really cheap. An older car uses four lug nuts, something like an 80s Civic maybe. Six, six lug nuts is usually reserved for trucks and SUVs because those are heavier duty and it's more expensive to have a axle with six lug nuts on it than one with four or five. The actual rear of the car, now the rear of the car is based not on the Nissan V35 Skyline but is instead based mostly off of the 370Z. And that's again a thing, a point that I want to drive home is just please for the love of god do not just copy cars. You can copy bits of cars. If you find a car that has a good-looking front bumper and you want to put that front bumper in your car, that's great. But automation cars, I guess, in the sense of making your own cars, making your own cars, not re recreating already existing cars or whatnot, you want to try and get away from the whole just copying everything from the front to the back. The front looks like a V35 Skyline. You know, we can go over up to the front. Kind of looks like a V35 Skyline. These headlights... You know, you can, I, I they, they kind of look like 996 headlights to me, I guess, in a way. You can kind of see that resemblance, I guess. And the rear end looks like a, looks like a 370Z, right? It's kind of how a lot of Grand Theft Auto cars operate too, and that they mix together a lot of existing cars, at least for like Grand Theft Auto 4 and uh, Grand Theft Auto single player. A lot of newer, a lot of newer GTA Online cars are basically just one-to-one -one ripoffs of existing cars, which I think is stupid. You also see, again, the bumper. The rear bumper kind of juts out like this. If I was to turn fixtures off, you'd see it's a lot less 
on the actual body than when you add these bumper bars. These bumper bars make it look a lot better. The exhaust is just a regular straight exhaust. Doesn't have anything fancy about it. No dual exhaust, no titanium tips, no side exits like a old muscle car or anything. Also see more of these seams that I use. I also want to talk about these just for a second. It's something I do on most of my cars. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. It's not a make or break thing. I think it just adds a bit of contrast to my designs. I've had people tell me they think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I've had people tell me that they don't like it. It makes it look like a cartoon. It's up to you, really. Now it's time to look at the Yobing. Now I'm going to spend a lot less time on this one, mostly because I've already said most of what I wanted to say during the Karuma analysis, but first we're going to start with the engine. Now I'm going to talk less about actually tuning the engine and more about the, I guess, philosophy surrounding the engine. This is a car that's body is based off a C5 Corvette, right? The wheelbase is similar to a Mazda Miata. So why in the hell does this thing have a 7 liter V12? Right? That's a, that's another thing that I think a lot of people fall into, and I think something that a lot of automation YouTube falls into as well, is, oh my god guys, look, I have this 1200 liter V6000, and it makes 1500 million horsepower, right? You know, that gets views, I guess, it pays the bills if you are able to monetize your channel, when it comes to making automation cars in a realistic sense, like what I like doing, it just doesn't make any sense, right? This engine, this car should probably use an engine that's like a four-cylinder, maybe, for what its size is. Now we're going to start with the front and move our way to the back like we did with the Karuma. So again, like I said, this is a C5 Corvette. It's a very blobby car. Blobby, late 90s. So the car having all of these harsh edges kind of does not fit, right? The Karuma, the body was a Lancer. That was early 2000s, right in the peak of the blobby passenger car era. So that car having a lot of flowy lines. But this car, at its fundamentals, like these are rectangle sealed beams. These headlights have not been used on a car since the, the early 80s, right? So it, it being on this makes no sense. This license plate... This license plate is the plate from a Japanese K car. Like, this is something you'd see on one of those Daihatsu, you know, cab over pickup trucks. Uh, not on a presumably American muscle car. Again, these headlights are sealed beams. None of this lines up. You can see this line is right here. This line is right here. You have this huge hood scoop that eats into the hood seam and is up front, even though I'm pretty sure this is a mid-engined car. These fenders, again, they come over the seam. They're these bolt-on fenders that aren't even bolted on. It's really wide, which is, looks really weird on a, on a, like a production car like this. These uh, side skirts have carbon infused on them, and again, they eat into this this looks like something you'd find in a Group B car, like an Audi Quattro would have this on it or something. These mirrors are, I guess this, this mirror, the mirrors, I remember I put on like that mostly just because I couldn't fit the mirrors right here where I wanted to place them. Um, but still, the mirrors look really weird, how they're angled, they're like sideways, basically. There's no win windshield wipers, has these fast and furious looking ass roof scoops and come to the back this this in theory is kind of good it continues this line right here and kind of tries to incorporate it into the bumper but it looks like i took all of about five seconds on slapping it down it doesn't line up at all i could have spent a lot more time doing it that's another thing that i want to add you know some people some people in the automation discord server spend months working on one car now i'm not saying your car is utter shit if you don't spend over a month working on it. Mine usually take me a few days, maybe one or two days, 
and usually I can get pretty engrossed in it, so I'll be working on it for a few hours a day. But, you know, this took five seconds. The rest of this car, I had this car done in 10 minutes. If you're doing cars and you're churning out cars that fast, maybe try and slow down, add a bit of detail, right? Because again, like I said, this is good in theory. It just, I didn't spend any time working on it. I just said, oh, that looks good enough, squinted my eyes and continued on. Rear end, big fuck off wing here. This looks like something you'd find on an Impreza or something along those lines. Something that, you know, mid 2000s, big wing type cars, and maybe a, a Lancer would have that not this these are led lights you didn't get led lights well i guess okay this thing is a 2012 that's only because i didn't change the model year this car is pretty much like late 90s i guess um because of the body i would say led lights weren't really a thing back then i think the first car one of the first cars that like had just led tail lights the the bugatti veyron had led tail lights and that was in 2005 and that was on a car that was a million and a half dollars that didn't that thing didn't even have led front headlights yet um so this car being you know six seven eight years older than that having a full led taillight assembly ripped straight off of a dodge challenger or a dodge charger sorry just doesn't make any sense the off-brand bass pro shop badge i kind of just added because i thought it was funny uh, i would definitely say if you're going to add badges to your car um Definitely try and, like, make your own. Um, the Karuma, the Mizak badge was a few, like, circles, kind of like how an old Mazda badge looked. Two circles with a Nissan-looking uh, beam in between them, kind of. Don't have to get too detailed in them. A lot of people will get, they'll learn um, texturing and make their own badges in, like, a, in, like, Photoshop or something. A lot of people make their own badges in Photoshop and then export them to the game using the Unreal Engine editor and stuff. I don't know how to use any of that. And I'm the last time I tried to, I think all the tutorials were out of date. I'm sure you could probably find something on doing that, but that's definitely something I would look into doing once you are, I guess, better at the game. This, okay, there's two things that's really bad about this. First, this thing has six exhaust pipes. Exhaust pipes, you really want... At most, like, four is probably the most you want in a car. One is good for, like, a base model car with few cylinders. Two is good for kind of sporty. Two on each side is something you'll have, like, an, on an STI. An STI will have two on each side or something, maybe. Six, that makes no sense. Especially, like, arranged like this. Looks like fucking church organs. Like, like the pipes from a church organ. That's what it looks like. Looks stupid. Same thing with this this bumper. This bumper is like a litmus test. Using this bumper immediately makes your car... I don't want to say immediately makes your car inferior, but it immediately makes your car inferior. It's kind of a cop-out. Nobody likes this fixture. A lot of cars that... A lot of people that use it see it as, oh my god, look, it, there's a grill, and there's all this detail, and there's all these different colors and contrast and, and whatnot. And they slap it on the front of the car. Usually it goes on the front. I've seen people put it. They put it on the front of the car. And they don't touch the rest of the bumper. They just use this one fixture. Uh, it comes with fog lights and everything. It does not look good. Please do not use this fixture. It's a total noob trap. It's You're way better off making your own front end. Honestly, the fact that this fixture is still even in the game. Considering they... The, the developers are kind of hell-bent on removing a lot of older things. They they get rid of a lot of older bodies that... A lot of older car bodies that aren't as good as the newer ones are and replace them. The fact that they haven't gone back to this fixture and kind of remade it is... I guess it's just they have their priorities in other places, but still. This fixture avoided at all costs. And welcome to the part of the video where I actually make the new car. So I'm going to be using the C5 body again because that's what the 
Eobing used, and I think that kind of doing a car that is similar to what that one was supposed to be, I guess, but in a more realistic, better sense, would probably be able to show be off better what the, I guess, car should have been when I do it correctly. So first is the engine, which is a 9 liter V10. Now that's a pretty fucking big engine, I'm <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, and that's definitely pushing the boundaries of what I think a production car would probably use. But, I mean, hey, it's a C5 body, the car itself is kind of based off of a Dodge Viper, I guess. Um, so, the Dodge Viper used an 8 liter V10. 9 liters, while pushing it, is, I guess, within the realm of possibility, considering how just crazy the Dodge Viper was. So, it made about 500 horsepower, that's pretty good for 1996. I think this car is like very slightly slower than the fastest production car, which again is, is crazy. I mean, that's just what this car is. This car is like this big mean supercar or sports car, muscle car, whatever. So just messing with the proportions a bit on the body, trying to get things looking nice. Um, wide wheel arches are good for the wide tires that this thing needs in order to actually be able to grip the ground correctly. And I do end up making the rear rims a, bit sl a slightly bit bigger than the front ones. I think that kind of looks nice on, on certain cars, and I think this is definitely a car that that would look nice on. Um, going for just a like manual steering, you know, a bunch of just like really rudimentary things, because that's what this car is supposed to kind of be. Um, even though it's a 96 and you know that they have the technology to to make it a Functioningly better car. I still choose to kind of go for um, Crappier things because that's what I think you know a Dodge Viper. That's what the Dodge Viper had. This is supposed to be somewhat similar to that. So um, I'm kind of trying to mimic that not in Not completely mimic it. I'm not completely cloning the Dodge Viper, but inspired by i don't know based you know those movies where it's like based on a true story and then you look up the true story it's based on and it's nothing like that it's kind of like that so i'm making the car this green color because i like to have like this flat um contrasty color in order to put fixtures on it on the, the body it i think it kind of makes it look um you know like you don't have the shine from from paint um and that red automation paint that every car comes you know, base width is kind of eh when it comes to to making the car on it. So you also saw I chose um, six lug nut tires or wheels. Um, that's because while looking up, you know, what kind of wheels a late 90s Dodge Viper used, they had six lug nuts. I'm guessing that's just because of how crazy the Dodge Viper is and the powertrain probably requires it to have six lug nuts, but I said, okay, that seems fine, and I went with it. Um, so doing this like molding on the front, basically kind of trying to get the bumper to kind of be a bumper. You don't want it to be flat. I know I've probably said that like a dozen times now, um, but seriously, having depth to the fixtures is really important. And even just having a bumper in the car, I mean, this car, you, some, you want something to absorb the impact, and what I'm placing right now is basically what would absorb any impacts that the car would would face. Um, impacts is in like minor things. I don't think this bumper is gonna make or break a hundred mile an hour collision or anything. But you know, if you back into something, you'd want a big chunk of bumper there in order to stop it from damaging anything important. So this is where I try looking at, you know, what kind of headlight shape I want. I'm looking at different shapes, you know, um, and I do the, the fog lights first. Fog lights, they eventually turn into indicators um, because of what kind of headlights I use, but I'm basically trying to see how can I fit this on the bumper first of all. And how can I get a good headlight shape too? 
Um, and the headlight shape I end up going with is actually just a circle. I do mess around with kind of making it look like a Dodge Viper headlight, basically. Which, if you don't know, Dodge Viper headlights are just like, kind of just like slits, I guess, basically. Um, but I'm trying to, right now, get this fog light indicator uh, fitting good and not having any gaps in the, the bumper. And then, yeah, I try and see Dodge Viper looking headlights, and I eventually just settle on just circles. And they're a bit, they're not perfect circles, it's like ovular. Ovular? Is that a word? Oval shaped. Um, and I see maybe go for it going for like two of them or something, but I just stick with the one. Um, then I think I do, yeah, I put a hood scoop on it. I don't know what the hell that fixer is supposed to be, but. I put this big hood scoop on it. It's a front-engined car, so it makes sense to have a, a hood scoop on the front. And you can see that that hood scoop does actually go over that seam that is the, the panel seam, panel gap, whatever, that is supposed to be the panel gap of the hood. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make custom seams later, and so I don't really particularly care about covering the bodies, um, regular seams, because I'm just going to make my own. So, if I wasn't going to make my own, that would be a big mistake. A small mistake. Not a big mistake. A small mistake I'm making. I do actually make a small, a few small mistakes in this car that I'll get to later that I've already fixed, because I'm recording this, like, two days after making this car. Um. So now we're moving on to the side. Um. And yeah, I'm copying over a few of the fixtures. You shift, press down the shift key and, and drag. It'll clone a fixture. Mostly because I want the bars to be kind of the same size. Um, both width, height, length, and whatnot. And then I'll fine tune it depending on what is needed. So here in the back, towards the rear of the car, I kind of want it to be a bit fatter. But I think, I, yeah, I end up kind of narrowing it down because it was a bit too fat. But... Um, you can see that I'm not actually covering the seam on the door, as opposed to what I did for the hood. Um, that's because I'm not going to edit the door seam. The door seam is going to stay the same. Of course, I'm going to cover it with the black bumper bars for the contrast purposes, but the actual door seam itself is going to stay the same shape. So, moving into the rear bumper, the rear bumper was kind of a pain in the ass, which is kind of funny because it is literally the ass of the car. Um, but I end up, I think, just skipping over the footage because I sat at this thing for too long trying to figure out how to get it to kind of wrap around the side of the car and not look completely stupid. Uh, so I tried doing some like 3D fixture fuckery in it. It ended up looking fine. Um, doing a... What's that called again? Fender flare. Fender flare. Which the Eobing did have. The Eobing did have fender flares. But the difference between the Eobing's fender flares and this car's fender flares is that the Eobing, I took all about five seconds putting the fender flares on that. This car, I actually spent a good amount of time doing the fender flares. You can see I have my time in the bottom right corner, and it's going by pretty quickly because this is this footage is, is sped up. I think this is like two hours of footage cut down to I think an hour-ish, and I think it's sped up by, I don't even know how long it's sped up by, but I spent a decent amount of time on that, and that's because, you know, while the Eobing had good ideas to what, you know, what shape the car was, was taking and whatnot, um, when I actually put it into practice, I kind of just, like, slacked off, slacked off on it. I just kind of didn't really put any effort into it, and this car, I mean... I'm putting effort into it to try and make it look good. It's not something that's so laborious. Is that how you pronounce that word? Laborious? It doesn't take so much work that I'm spending hours upon hours trying to get this fender flare to look right. But the Eobing, like, it was good in theory, but I just did not spend any time on it. So now the rear end, I, I put this wing, or I guess lip spoiler on it, and kind of extended it down. I think that's kind of what, like, the the Viper does. I don't know. So it looks it looks fine. Um, the rear end up, ends up being a bit plain. I don't know. Um, 
But yes, I did fix a few things. Like, I forgot reflectors on the sides. Cars in the United States, they need, they need side reflectors. Most new cars have them built into the headlights, but this car and some other cars don't. Um, like, my car doesn't. My car is a 2007. It doesn't have reflectors built into the headlights, so the you know North American model of it, the bumper, has big reflectors on the side of it. Well, the European version doesn't have those reflectors. Um, so this car, you won't see reflectors on it, but I did put them there uh, after. And I didn't put a third brake light on it either, which is something that I forget a lot. Um, third brake lights have been mandatory in the United States, and I think probably the rest of the world for a while now. Um, the United States, they needed them at least since, I think, maybe 1984, if I'm not mistaken. So... The Dodge Viper cleverly does that by hiding it in the badge, so that's what I did on this. Uh, you can see that I'm kind of doing, trying to do this like Pagani Zonda type center exhaust with the grill in the back, but I figured that only really works with mid-engine cars, and considering this is front-engined, uh, I just end up ditching it and just putting a plate there. So that that's a placeholder plate that I end up just having there for, I guess, scale purposes when it, when I eventually do add a plate holder. Um, and right now I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the badge. Uh, I think, what do I do next? Do I do the exhausts next? I do the exhausts at some point. Uh, I guess I'm just looking around to see. Yeah, I tried going for this fender flare up front, but the actual flares didn't fit, so I just said screw it. Um, yeah, okay, so we're doing the exhaust now. I was really going to do that center exhaust, but it kind of looks stupid. So I just go for rear exhaust, but then I'm like, Hey, what am I doing? I'm making a Dodge Viper. I can do side dump exhausts. So I kind of steal that fixture that was supposed to be the, the tail light and cut out a chunk of the body for the side exit exhausts. Um, kind of have to watch your step with those. I think it's very easy to burn yourself on them, but... It's a, it's a Dodge Viper clone, I guess. Uh, don't forget windshield wipers either. I almost forgot those. I'm glad I remembered. Um, so now we're moving on to the interior. Again, I said this a lot of times already. I think I'm not an interior guy. I'll probably eventually get myself to a point where I can start making interiors. Um, and I do plan on doing more automation videos, I guess. More like smaller ones, I guess. This one's, I think, like 40-something minutes long. Um, I'll definitely try and get interiors. I don't know. It's just, I prefer working on the outside of the car. I never really got any chance to, to kind of get interiors down, because when they kind of started becoming a thing, it was kind of a time when I was taking a break from the game, so everybody kind of progressed without me, I guess. Um, but, I don't know, I put something in there just so it looks fine for me to have the windows be transparent. You know, just have some seats and a, and a dashboard and a steering wheel and stuff in there. So now, now I'm finally going over to actually do all of the trim pieces, the panel gaps. Um, the, I don't know, they kind of look like Tesla panel gaps, I guess, because you know, Tesla's got shitty build quality and shitty panel gaps, so... Because, you know, they're, they're nice and wide on the cars I make. So, this is where, this is where I, what I was talking about earlier happens. The hood. So, the hood of, or the, this hood scoop goes over the hood seam. And, while well, that would be an issue if I didn't touch the hood seams. Because I'm actually going to extend the hood further down the car than what it is originally on the body. It's not going to end up being, um, actually like oh sorry i just alt tabbed here um it's not actually going to be i guess whatever you know messed with so you can see i kind of outline it and then i'm like hold on this is way too boxy it looks kind of stupid way too jagged i guess and so i kind of go and smooth it out by using multiple fixtures move the badge down i think and then i cut to here because i think i alt tabbed again so this is where i'm doing the door seam now and the 
door scene, like I said before, I didn't really touch it because, well, I was going to just use the same door scene. That's why I didn't have anything really going on top of it. In the same way that I had the hood scoop kind of cover that hood scene. So this is kind of a lot of, I don't want to say a lot of work. I mean, it's kind of just tedious, I guess, because you don't want to use too few fixtures to where it's jagged and straight, but you don't want to use too many to where you're tanking your game by having all of these, you know, having hundreds of fixtures for just the door panel gaps. Um, so even with the amount of fixtures that I'm using, it's still kind of a lot putting them down, but I think it's, I think it's worth it. And you know, if you don't like how it looks, you think it looks a bit too weird. I know I've already said this so many times, and I know a lot of this video is just me repeating myself, but for the love of God, you don't have to do it. Like, I've, I've had people tell me they don't like it, and it's fine if you don't like it. Um, I'm just trying to get my thoughts on how I design cars out there in hopes that other people can kind of have their epiphany moment as to what to do, I guess. So this panel gap here, I have no idea what this gap is used for. Maybe T-tops? I don't think this car is a T-top, though. I mean, did C5s have T-tops? No, they didn't. Did they? I don't know. Um, so this is the trunk. Yes, Vipers had trunks. Vipers did not have a lot of things. They didn't have door handles. They didn't have windows. They didn't have roofs. Roofs? Roofs? Whatever, the, the first generation. But I, I'm pretty sure they did have trunks. Now I'm getting rid of that plate because I'm going to actually add a few things. I'm going to try adding like this kind of panel here to make it look better, but I kind of don't like it that much. So I end up removing it, but now I'm actually going to go through the um, assigning the different lights, actual lights. So those, those were originally going to be fog lights, but end up being the blinkers. And the headlights um, just become the headlights. So I'm using this um, kind of like solid um, material in the background. It's really bright looking. So when the headlights turn on, they're actually very bright. They look like like pickup truck headlights, you know, where they blind you even though they're not on their high beams. Um, and then yeah, I add the actual like light part of the light as opposed to just the insides, the the whatever texture I guess on the inside material um, rear end so these bottom smaller lights are gonna be the reverse lights and the top ones are going to be both brake lights turn signals and tail lights and the way I do it I think is kind of cool I don't know exactly how legal it would be um, but basically the entire light is the tail light um, so it's also the brake light because that's how I guess regulations in the US work, you're able to have them be the same. But then the outside ring of that light is going to be the turn signal. So there's going to be like a little O ring, I guess, on the outside of it. Which, I don't know how well the actual execution of it was. You can't really see it <laughs> that well, but I think it was a cool idea. Um, and then, yeah, and then after this video was done, I went and made that rear badge right there, the black plastic piece um, into a, into a, a rear tail light. Or not a tail light, it was a brake light, yeah. Rear brake light. So I'm looking at uh, just another license plate for scale, and I go choose this grill right here. Just kind of reshape it so the grill, or the license plate fits inside of it, and I'd alt tab again, but basically I think that's pretty much it. I give it a name, um, I paint it, that's not the color it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, it's gonna be blue. Um, pretty nice looking blue, actually. Um, and then I messed the blue up, so I have to do it again, but. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now it's just kind of painting it, getting the um, different colors. It's an American car, so giving it this red, white, and blue kind of paint. So USD is basically the sports division of uh, Upward, which is my main American brand. It's kind of like the my version of Ford, 
I guess. Um, it was one of the first brands I made, actually the first, the first car I made in automation that I remember um, was the Upward Aerials, uh, an SUV, kind of like a 2013, I think that was when it started, 2011, yeah, 2011 uh, Ford, uh, what's it called, Ford uh, Explorer, yeah. Um, so the Upward has always been my Ford type brand, so I guess making a Dodge Viper using my Ford brand isn't the best, but I mean... Ford had the GT, which I guess came a bit later, but still. So, pretty much at the end of the recording here now. You know, this was, it was fun to make. Um, I hope that, you know, no matter where, I guess, you are, how good you are at the game or whatever, you're at least able to get one thing out of this. That's all that, I guess, really matters to me. I think the, the automation scene on YouTube is kind of a bit weird and so is the bmg drive one i didn't really get into a lot of bmg stuff in this video and i will i will in the future but you know i just kind of i don't know kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth kind of what people do with this with this game it's not the best of of quality when it comes to making cars and i kind of want to change that and you know this is my my first step towards towards doing that so again, you know, if you got anything out of this video, I'm glad. And if you liked this video, you know, you liked my channel, you liked whatever, you know what? That's great. And I'm, I appreciate that you do. All right. I want to give actually, you know what? I want to give a big thanks, a big thanks to a, a few people who, who helped me. Let me, uh, let me bring it up real quick. In order of appearance, the cars you saw were created by Leon, Skyline Fox, Marcus.MV Design, Ldub, Sucrane, Falling Comet, Doctor Doom Discord, and Hybrid Trani. I really do want to give them a big thanks, as I feel the video would not have been as good if they were not featured in it. Again, thank you very much for watching. I've got some more videos planned soon, so stay tuned for those.